How quickly we seem to forget that a Supreme Court just here in the last several months told this administration, you just cannot willy nilly bail out and start paying off people's student loans. You simply can't do it. The Supreme Court said that you need Congress. Clear authorization from Congress. But yesterday, Joe Biden went out there and tried to buy votes again when he said this. From day one, my administration has been committed to fixing the broken student loan system and making sure higher education is a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier. My administration has approved debt cancellation for 4 million Americans through various actions. And today, I'm announcing new plans that would cancel student debt for millions more. In total, these plans would cancel some or all student debt for 30 million Americans when combined with everything we've done so far. To find out how these plans may impact you, visit studentaid.gov. Yeah, visit uh, screwthetaxpayer.gov. Chris Kobach is here on KCMO, the Kansas Attorney General. He's filed lawsuits against the administration for their attempts to continue to, you know, pay off these student loans, which undoubtedly is a problem. Higher education is undoubtedly a crisis. Anyone who's a parent who's either paid for college, who is trying to save up for college, as we are, understands that. Chris Kobach has four kids, right? Chris, you understand that, but this is not the way. Well, actually, I have five kids. Five! I knew knew it was four or five. I knew it was a lot. Yeah, and we are exactly in that situation, trying to save up. You know, we've got the education savings accounts that both Missouri and Kansas have. For, you know, setting aside some dollars tax free. And we're trying to do it the responsible way. I've got one girl in college, one one about to leave for college this fall. And we've, you know, we've, we've planned it out. We've, we think we've figured it out, but they're both working uh, to add additional money. And, and, and the bottom line is people who do that, people who you know, take the responsible course of trying to figure out how to pay for college themselves are now being forced to pay by our taxes for those who are, well, the Biden administration is trying to force us to pay for the student loans of others who, who, who didn't figure out a way to pay for their debts. And it's, it's unfair, but it's illegal. This, as you mentioned, the Supreme Court said uh, it was in June of 2023, and this was a case brought by six states, including Kansas, uh, and Missouri was on that case, as well as Nebraska, the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do it. As you said, you have to have congressional authorization. The, the text of the statute does not allow uh, the, the federal government, the Department of Education, to modify, is what they thought they were doing, modifying the loans by just you know, forgiving or canceling ten or $20,000 worth. <clears throat> and it's as if, <clears throat> excuse me, it's as if the, uh, the Biden administration is just telling everybody, don't look over there, don't look over there, nothing to see there. <laughs> we're going to pretend that that didn't happen. Uh, and as Biden said, it was in um, February, I think. The Supreme Court blocked it, but that didn't stop me. Now he's running around having these rallies like in Madison, Wisconsin yesterday, and he doesn't even mention the Supreme Court's decision. He just – he acts like we're all supposed to forget it. I mean I've, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime where a president is just absolutely defying the Supreme Court and, you know, I think the last you know, analogous case would have been maybe President Jackson in, in the 1830s when he famously said, you know, John Marshall, referring to the Supreme Court justice, John Marshall has made his decision. Now let him enforce it. And he defied the Supreme Court. It, it wasn't, you know, that happened a few times before the Civil War. But in the last 150 years plus, we have been following decisions of the Supreme Court. If you lose, we are a country where the rule of law prevails then you can't do that, Mr. President. But here we are. Yeah. Um, Chris Kobach is on KCMO. I, what it, and what the Wall Street Journal wrote today is that Joe Biden believes he can jam the courts, automatically forgive the debt before a judge has time to stop him. Knowing the legal system as you do, having been involved in at least one of these lawsuits, how likely is that where he can basically forgive the debt before a judge tells him he can well, we are, as we speak, we are in the, in the process of trying to stop that. So uh, Kansas led a coalition of 11 states uh, to sue the Biden administration again. Uh, we, uh, this was uh, roughly two weeks ago, or not a week and a half. And then on Friday uh, last week, we filed what's called a motion for a preliminary injunction, which is a, an attempt to stop, to enjoin the administration from continuing to cancel these loans, which they're doing on a daily basis. People are receiving 
letters in the mail saying, you know, congratulations, your, your, your loan is completely canceled. You owe nothing. And so we're trying to stop it with a preliminary action, which is a, a rapid court action uh, before the court comes back and then renders a final decision. So we filed that motion. The Department of Justice is defending the Biden administration in this uh, ill-fated regard. And they have uh, another well, let's say week and a half to file their, their response, and then we'll have a hearing very quickly. So hopefully – uh, God willing, we'll get a uh, we'll get an injunction in place, in, you know, within the next few weeks. Or how does well, it depends how long how does this depends com- how long the judge takes? Okay, all right. So how does this compare? Because there was the first attempt to bail out student loan debt from last year that obviously the Supreme Court struck down. You and I spoke what three weeks ago about a different attempt, and now there's this attempt yesterday. Are the second and third attempts basically joined at the hip? Or are they separate in terms of how they're handled legally? They're they're very similar. So it's it, think of it this way: the Biden administration decided, you know, at least two years ago, that they were going to try to cancel student loan debt, uh, even though they don't have any authority in existing federal law. And and a, and a federal agency cannot do that. A president cannot do that by executive order. Only Congress can uh, issue an appropriation of this magnitude, which is what you're doing. <clears throat> you're spending money. You're not canceling the debt by just you know magically making it happen. Uh, the taxpayers are spending the money. Anyway, so the first time they did it, they said, all right, we're going to look at the word modify, and we're going to pretend we're modifying the loans, the word modify in federal law. The Supreme Court said, no, that, that doesn't work. This time, and the Supreme Court also said, by the way, if you're going to do this, it requires congressional action. This time, they're pretending as if the Supreme, you know, they, that, that decision didn't come down, and they're saying, well, oh, look here, we can also um, alter the terms of repayment. Uh, that's something that the agency has the authority to do. Okay. Once again, uh, we'll be going to the court saying, well, no, that doesn't work either because the word repayment is in that sentence. <laughs> you, 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 when you and I alter the terms of repayment, we go to the bank, we might ask for an extension on the loan, add a few more years to it, a different interest rate, whatever. But there still is the obligation to repay the loan. So they're, they're one at a time, they're going through different words in the statute and saying, how about this? Maybe, maybe this allows us to do it. But they're ignoring the fact that the Supreme Court already said, no, you can't do this. You have to have congressional action. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we feel very strong about our legal position. We'll be just pointing to the recent Supreme Court precedent as well as other ones saying you can't you can't do this, Mr. Biden. Do you um, are you going to be going at this alone in Kansas or is Missouri and Nebraska and the other states who are part of that original case going to be joining you on this one as well? So um, Nebraska is part of the is part of the 11 state group. Kansas is is leading the charge in this and we'll be doing the argument here in federal district court in Kansas. Um, Missouri says they're going to be filing another lawsuit in a different circuit. Uh, So they will will try to have two different states or two different lawsuits going at the same time. Uh, Sometimes you can strategically do that to ensure that, you know, if if one judge doesn't issue an injunction, perhaps the the other one will. Gotcha. Now, Chris Kobach, how would you, I mean, if you were to say, hey, um, you're someone who obviously knows the political landscape very well, not just here locally, but on the federal level, what is the answer? As a father of five kids, you know, I've got three now. I mean, we all want to see college be more affordable, um, but this seems like the antithesis of what we should be doing because it in no way encourages the universities to get their costs under control. So what's the answer here? You're, you're exactly right. It, it, it is the opposite of what we should be doing. We're basically injecting more money into the system, more ability to pay into the system, right? So when the universities see, oh, look, these, these student loans are probably going to be forgiven, not only now, but in the future. So uh, that's we can continue to jack up prices. Uh, I, the opposite needs to be done. And I think where we need to look is at the cost, the, 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 administ- the universities themselves. And uh, you know, by just forgiving student loans, that doesn't in any way push down costs. So I, looking at this from the perspective as a, a, a former law professor, which, which I did for 15 years at UMKC, um, my opinion on this is I, I think universities across America are, are becoming top-heavy with administration, and, and that's statistically true. The amount of positions that are highly, highly paid um, in administration far exceeds the number of professors and uh, and usually the pay far exceeds the number the the pay for the professors too. So if you look at where they're spending their money, uh, they they've become very top heavy. I think universities need to be uh, you know compelled if they're state universities to to trim down and 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 find ways to to get slimmer so that the uh, the, the amount of tuition they charge students is lower. Um, 
I think you, as consumers, we have to demand that. And I think there are some, you know, there are some schools that are offering, you know, degrees, the trade degrees and things that can make the, the student just as much money in their career in the long run and that are not as expensive. So, you know, we have to put pressure on the universities to, uh, to cut costs because the inflation in the cost of tuition over the past 30 years far exceeds the inflation in the price of other things. Yeah, no, it is completely out of control. Chris Kobach leading the way on uh, this here in Kansas as the attorney general. We always appreciate the time, Chris. Thanks for joining us again and um, keep fighting the good fight on this one. Thanks for the time. Will do. My pleasure. All right. That is Chris Kobach on KCMO.